Hi Year 10s, uh, we're moving on from Romeo and Juliet um, for the last week of this term. We're going to start looking at some of the poems um, that are in the Power and Conflict anthology. Um, you should all have your own anthology, um, but if not there is a link uh, within this, uh, this lesson for you to see uh, and to print off some copies of the poems. Um, in this case we're looking at Exposure, um, which is a poem by Wilfred Owen. And before we kick off mm -hmm. with the poem itself, I want you to have a think at what the word exposure or to be exposed could mean. So write down your ideas, um, specifically any interpretations of those words um, or any ideas what the poem might be about based on the title. So once you are ready to do that, pause this video and just down there, pause and then come back to it and you're ready. OK, so you should have some ideas already about what the poem is about based on the idea of exposure. Now, um, the next question might seem unconnected with the previous one, but give it a go anyway. There are two pictures here from World War I, uh, 1914 to 1919. And how would it feel to live, fight and to die in these conditions? Uh, so why do you think Owen chose to include the weather in this poem? So have a think about, well, look close at these pictures first. Have a think about those two questions and see if you can start formulating your own ideas. OK, well, World War One was a particularly difficult time for everybody involved. It was a horrific conflict um, in which millions of people died. Mm -hmm. So ideally, you should have some idea about uh, World War One already um, and some idea of how that would fit into world history as much as how influential it was on British poetry. Um, so this is Wilfred Owen, and he was one of Britain's foremost war poets. Um, he wrote poems like Dolce et Decorum Est and Anthem for a Doomed Youth. Um, many of his contemporaries, who were also soldiers in the war, in the war uh, included Rupert Brooke, Siegfried Sassoon, Rupert Graves, uh, sorry, Robert Graves, and uh, Edmund Blunden. So a selection of poems, poets who are considered to be the British war poets. Uh, there were some more as well, but those are kind of the key uh, five names. Um, so Owen was influenced by the Romantic poets uh, during uh, holidays in Cumbria at the age of 11. Uh, and he was an Anglican due to his mother's faith, but became quite disillusioned um, when he was working as an assistant to the vicar in a place called Dunstan near Reading, whilst he was also studying at the University of Reading. Um, and before war broke out, so in 1913, uh, he was a private tutor in Bordeaux in France. Uh, and he enlisted in 1915 with the Artists Regiment. Uh, but was badly injured and returned to the UK uh, to recuperate uh, in a hospital. And while he was there, he made friends with fellow poet Siegfried Sassoon um, and returned to active duty. Um, he felt it was his duty to go back because Sassoon had been shot um, and survived in what was later described as a friendly fire incident, for which Owen felt could have been um, either self-inflicted or potentially uh, caused by a fellow British soldier. Um, but Sassoon threatened Owen saying if you go back to the front line I'll stab you in the leg so he was so passionate about not uh, seeing his friend go back to France to fight um, that he threatened him with physical violence but uh, Owen did go back and was killed a week before armistice was signed uh, it was quite a sad um, end to essentially a very um, in posthumously anyway a very successful literary life um, what I want you to do is read the poem now and following the link that I've given you as well. So you can, you can if you haven't got that in your anthology already, um, but don't make any notes, just have a read through it. Make sure you understand it. Search any tricky words, uh, but make sure you have a really good understanding of that poem first without any, making any judgments. Once you've read through that, I would like you to read it out again. And in your anthology or printing out a version um, from the one I've sent you, I want you to start underlining any words that relate to power and conflict um, specifically, those are the kind of overarching uh, themes that are going to appear in these poems. So it's important we start looking for the words and phrases that are linked back to this overarching theme. So give yourself probably a good 10, 15 minutes to do that. And then once you've uh, read your, you're ready, you can restart the video and we'll go to our next task. OK, so the uh, penultimate task really is to start looking at one line at a time. It's important to think about the poem as a whole and what is the overall theme, what's the overall feeling, what's the message, but 
if we're not sure, it's always quite good to start on a more simple level. Start with one line. So I want you to close your eyes and just pick a line, not the first line, anything else. Pick a line, that's the one you're going to analyse. I, I think it's pretty easy to stick to stanza one and two and the final stanza, uh, as there are a couple in the middle that are a little bit more tricky, but those are the ones that um, where we will move on to further into this course. So for now, pick a line, that's the line you're going to analyse. Now how we analyse it? Well, there's only four steps really. So the first is, does it can look for any poetic techniques? Is there any figurative language, any kind of um, poetic language techniques or ways of writing that make you think that there is something important there? Remember, each technique you find is like someone shining a spotlight on it. That spotlight is there for a reason. It wants you to look at this line and really think about it in a more uh, analytical, critical way. Number two, what are the deeper meanings in your life? Is there anything which has more than one meaning? Is there anything that has uh, multiple meanings? Um, number three is what is the impact on the reader? What do you think the emotive or thought process would be for a reader having read that? What do you think the uh, poet wants that person to think, feel or do? And lastly, a bit of a stretch, but I'm pretty sure most of us in this class can accomplish that, is what does it make us think? So what does it make us think about the poet, the poem, or the theme, okay? I've given an example, which is the um, the first line. Let me just remove my, okay? And I've said that the first one, the first line of the poem I've, that I've picked out on, so you don't have to do it, um, I've broken down into four steps here, just like you're going to do. So the first line I've picked is, our brains ache in the merciless e iced east winds that knive us. So the way I might structure my one line analysis would be to begin with that Owen uses personification to give the wind the human characteristic of being merciless. So our brains ache in the merciless ice east winds that knive us. So the idea of somebody kniving you, the verb knive rather than the plural of the noun. So uses personification, so that's my technique, that's a poetic technique, that gives uh, the wind the human characteristics of being merciless. You see I've used the word merciless in there as that is also an adjective to describe uh, a person more so more than an inanimate object. Um, my deeper meaning that I've picked is it says in showing the wind as being merciless Owen is showing the weather to be another enemy or opponent for the soldiers to face. So the idea that whilst you might assume that people like soldiers are merciless in this case it's the weather. For the impact on the reader I said the use of the adjectives iced and verb knife gives the reader the impression that the weather is physically attacking the soldiers it makes the reader feel sympathy for the soldiers who are stuck in the trenches, unable to escape the harsh conditions. So that, and in and of itself, those three um, parts are fine. That's probably okay for mid-grade level uh, analysis. I wanted to go a bit further, but obviously we're this is the first time we might have encountered this poem, so we're going to do it in a quite simplified way, perhaps. But the the way it makes us think, for example, is a bit more. We want to be a bit more. Um, critical because we need to start thinking about the context as well. So here is where we would bring in understanding the context to make it um, more pertinent and make our, our knowledge clearer to the person marking this paper or me writing uh, up some responses to your answers. So I wrote, Owen starts the poem with our brains ache. This could be read literally, the soldiers have headaches caused by the cold winds. However, it could also refer to the physical and emotional pain the soldiers are experiencing as a result of being forced to fight in World War One. So I haven't really written a, a very detailed answer or a particularly complex answer, really. Um, but I've started that as a means of then moving on to the next paragraph. So having set that up, um, that would allow you to start talking about um, the soldiers themselves, experience of World War I, Owen's um, thoughts about World War I, which should come across quite clearly in the poem itself. Um, but crucially for everybody uh, watching this video, I'd like to think you've been able to do the first three questions relatively well um, but you're going to have to do that for your own line now to prove that so you can all i think quite comfortably follow the steps i've put in there um, and once you upload that onto google classroom i'll be able to give you feedback as well so i want you to give this one a go for yourself um, pause the video when you're ready to start and then when you're ready to when you're finished restart the video to see what's next okay so you will have had now an while you're on your poem, you'll have that one line that's nicely annotated, and that will be your start point, really. So I would suggest that after this lesson, perhaps you go back and add my uh, some of the annotations that I might have 
uh, you might be able to take from my writing to the first line, because it's a really important quote to remember. But from your line, and looking at the poem as a whole now, there are three questions I want you to answer in your book. So, firstly, what is the narrator exposed to? So what is it that the narrator, uh, in this case a soldier during World War I, exposed to? And make sure you can find any alternative readings or meanings of that. Question two is, what is the narrator's opinion of World War I? Is there anything in there that tells you something um, that is relevant to the, creating an opinion? So not specifically just the poet's opinion, but the narrator that has been created, this person in the poem who is telling the story. Um, and make sure you incorporate a quote. It's really important we start using the quotes from the poem to uh, support our ideas. And the third question is, why does Owen end every stanza with either a short statement or a rhetorical question? So what does that really make us think about um, in this in this instance? So this is looking at that as a writing technique that's been chosen for a particular effect on the reader. So make sure you can answer all three questions in your book. And then if you can photograph these or type them straight into Google Classroom, that would be fantastic. Well, that's it for today's lesson. I've hopefully you enjoyed it and have now learned a little bit more about exposure and Wilfred Owen. And next time we'll be looking at another poem in our anthology and you'll find out what it is very soon. Bye for now.